Hey, my name is Will, and this is my sparkling water kegerator using a CO2 tank, a mini fridge, and instead of a keg, I'm using a reverse osmosis water tank. I don't have access to a keg because I live internationally. To cover some bases, here's my CO2 tank. This is a water line in, and then back there in the dark, you can kind of see the access point for water and electricity in, and then the air in. And then obviously we have the the tower where we can pull the carbonated water out. And that tower is made with just extra fittings. Okay, so here's the reverse osmosis water tank, which is taking place of a normal corny keg. Um, the, a few benefits of using a reverse osmosis tank is it doesn't take as much space. So you can leave the plastic on the door of the fridge. You can leave the freezer in the fridge and it all fits uh, within the normal cubic footage of the fridge. Okay, so the magic of the system is this T valve right here. As you can see, I only have one access point to this reverse osmosis uh, water tank, but I need to get air in, water in, and water out, all from one access point. And you do that in a pretty ingenious way that I didn't come up, to, come up with but uh, another YouTuber did. So as you can see, this there's a white tube inside of this clear tube. That white tube is thinner and smaller. It can fit through the fittings and through this fitting and not block it. And then it goes down all the way to the bottom as a dipstick. So water would flow up that white tube and out this side. At the same time, water can flow in this side and around that tube and it drops in on the top. That's the genius. Look up on YouTube how to do that. Um, so water flows this direction. It hits the Y. It flows around through the freezer and out the party, party faucet. From this Y, flows down through the one-way valve into a small powered uh, water pump. The water pump is not necessary for the system. However, it allows you to cycle water through from the bottom around to the top and it runs it by the airline and so it carbonates the water within an hour. So what is this, four gallons? It carbonates within an hour if the water's cold. Um, the one-way valve is really important but it, because it keeps water or rather the air from pushing backwards in the system. And when you do that, if you fill this line and this line up with water, or sorry, with air, then the pump isn't primed and it's not a self-priming pump. So the one-way valve helps air not flow backwards, keeps the pump primed. And then the air and the water mixture go to this Y. Um, this is a water in, we'll get back to that. Um, but right now there's no water coming in. So this air and water flow back to the top of the system and they're constantly recirculating. I normally don't run with the pump on, but right now I'm showing you with it on. And then this is water into the system. Um, I didn't want to try and fill up the system from this small access point, nor did I want to have to fill up the system when, the, when I ran out of water. I just wanted to be able to turn on a valve and it filled itself up. Um, it's a little bit tricky on how you can force water into a system that's pressurized. Essentially, you need a strong pump on this side that's more powerful, it does higher PSI, than the air that you have coming from the CO2 tank. As you can see, the CO2 is set at about 24 PSI right now. I normally do about 20, but right now I'm doing 24. And for me to bring water in, I need to be able to pump higher than that. So now I'm gonna go over to where the water comes in at. We've got a water filtering system from City Water here, and it's a six step system water comes in blah 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 um, when it hits when it goes out it hits this uh, t-valve and it goes up to the freshwater sink tap water um, and then it goes out the other side back to the mini fridge but the star of the show which makes the whole kegerator system work is this pump it pumps at uh, 60 psi and it automatically shuts off when you reach 40 psi so I've got potentially 40 PSI coming in from this water in. That 40 PSI overpowers whatever pressure I have in here and it forces water into the system. Now when the system reaches 40 PSI, it automatically turns off. 
The system may not be full when it reaches 40 PSI. What you don't wanna do is have the water coming in and the air on at the same time without monitoring it. Because eventually when the water with the whole system is a higher pressure than what your regulator is set to, the water will start flowing backwards up the air line. So you have to monitor it. And what I typically do is when I turn the water on, I take a look at the regulator and I watch it climb. And I wait until it reaches 25 or something. You can kind of see it climbing there. Um, and then I just turn the water off. I just turned it off. And um, slowly over time, not slowly, fast actually, as the water is circulating, the water will pull in and mix with the CO2 and it will reduce the pressure of this. So over time, that regulator pressure will go down to whatever I have the regulator set at, which is 25. I drilled three access points into the fridge. You can see the two back there and then one for the tower on top. Um, I don't recommend drilling uh, access points in the side of mini fridges because this is where they disperse heat. And so there's tubes running through here and I punctured one. Thankfully, I was able to fix it but don't drill through the sides of mini fridges, but you are still safe to drill on top or through the door. Cheers. So I understand that this is a little bit complicated with the 40 PSI coming in, 25 or less coming in from the air, and then this can overpower that, sending water up into the CO2. Um, but ultimately, for this to overpower that, it has to compress all the air in this tube. Um, and when that's compressing, Ultimately, that would reach 40 PSI before the water gets to here. I try not to just leave it open while that's open. I'll monitor it until it reaches 25 PSI, and then I'll shut off the water. But that can leave the tank not full. It's quite hard to get the tank full full without releasing the head of air. Um, and I don't have an air release. Adding an air release would be really wise in this system. One way you could do it is when the system is idle and you're just taking water out, is you turn off the regulator so you don't refill the system with air as you take water out. So what that would do is water would go out um, and the air would be able to expand here, filling the void of the water but with less pressure. And then you could pump more water in and then the system would always just go back to the same pressure. Um, so it takes a little bit of thought, pretty methodical thought, about how to get this to work super smooth. But ultimately, it's easy in that as I take water out, I can force water in. Um, the, the hard part is getting the tank to its fullest. Um, but if you're content with three gallons of the tank um, and not being able to fill up that last gallon, then uh, you you just force water in until it's at max pressure and then shut it off and then uh, pull it out of the top. Lastly, I've got to talk about, this is a reverse osmosis tank, but I'm not using it the way a traditional reverse osmosis tank is used. I am just using it as a water tank. Typically a reverse osmosis tank has a bladder that fills the whole thing and it's full of air. And then you force water in through the top and it compresses that bladder down. And the whole time it's creating a lot of force and pressure back on that water. And then when you stop filling it up and you wanna take water out, you open up the valve and that air uh, bladder in here actually pushes the water out and it comes out there. And it doesn't use electricity, it's just using air pressure. But I didn't want air pressure because I have CO2 pressure in the whole system in the water and it accomplishes the same thing. So at the bottom of the tank, there's a Schrader valve and you just poke that and release the whole bladder as you fill the tank with water. And then this becomes a traditional tank again. So yes, it's a reverse osmosis um, tank, but I'm not using it as one.